like I was learning as I went and everybody was watching every inch of it. Hey, I'm Dove Cameron and this is Billboard News. It's Rania Niftos with Billboard News, and I am so excited to be here with singer-songwriter, Emmy Award winner, Dub Cameron. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you. Me too. It's been a long time coming. It has been a long time coming. We've both been manifesting this to happen. So your debut album, Alchemical Part One. Mm -hmm. So you're splitting it into two parts. Yeah. What was the idea behind telling a story in sequence like that? I felt like I was writing the two halves in such different headspaces. Like the first half was really like about the ending of something and an entire year of my life and the processing of that that happened. And then there was like a very stark kind of sonic page turn when it came to the sort of like next musical phase that I stepped into. It just kind of ended up making, making sense to split it. You've also been sprinkling singles throughout the past few years and now mm. you finally have a full project out. Mm. How does that feel to have like a complete body of work to share with your fans? It's really nice. I think especially because I can see the full trajectory of when the full project is out. Mm -hmm. It's all gonna add up to one album. This to me is the, the warm up for the full album, but it's really nice to be releasing at least the beginning of a body of work. Right. Because it, it does feel a little bit like like it feels a little bit like revving an engine and, and like putting the brakes on to yeah. be doing singles all the time. Like right. that was just driving me a little nuts. Must have to find mm -hmm. What happened with my music was so backwards from what normally happens. Mm -hmm. You know, normally you release an album and then something off the album is like the big runaway hit, right? Right, right, right. But because I had this basically like one of my very first songs changed my life, I had to like go back and sort of give emotional context to like how I got there, which is kind of like what this first half is mm -hmm. before I um, round the corner and, and sort of like return to the boyfriend and breakfast sort of era. This is like I'm almost like doubling back energetically. Okay. Yeah, which is which has been a really interesting exercise. Is it hard? Because you are very open and vulnerable, you know, in interviews and on social media, but music might be different. Is it was it tough for you to open up and kind of share a more stripped back, raw version of yourself at all? It was. I always said that I um, never wanted to release any sad music or any ballads because <laughs> I think I was really avoidant for right. a long time in my life. And I was like, everything's amazing. I'm so, so happy. I can and feel I, like, that. Yep. Wasn't. You know, Brutal. I, was, yeah. I was really not happy. <laughs> but I decided that like, if I was ever going to be the person, right? Cause mm -hmm. like your, your personhood and your life has to come before anything. And if I was ever going to become the person that I wanted to be, and because music is so important to me and it's such a huge part of my life, I had to integrate what has happened so far mm -hmm. and I have to write for me first and foremost because that's always the stuff that I think is the hardest to write. Yeah. It's like when you're not thinking like, what are people gonna like? But you're like, what am I having such a hard time saying to yeah. myself? <laughs> something I, I've learned is the only way to actually truly get past something is to really look at it and open the wound and experience all the feelings of it so that you can process it. Right, well, so I, I that's why the album is actually called Alchemical. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, it's obviously relating to the word alchemy, which which is the process of taking one thing and transmuting it into another. Mm -hmm. And I started to mess around with the idea that I have that tattooed on my shoulder. I said to someone recently who was struggling with like facing their own pain and we were talking about that. And I offered a metaphor that was like, I try to imagine that every big, ugly, indisputably ugly thing that happens in our life is like, if we are to imagine that we are a slab of marble mm -hmm. and every big, scary, happening is the pick axe that is like revealing the shape of the statue mm -hmm. underneath. We have to be, we can choose to be, I guess I should say, grateful for these things because we can either, you know, live our lives as this amorphous thing that we never quite make out the shape of and, and it's fine and, and perfectly safe or these things that happen, we can say, okay, I had no choice in this matter. Yeah. This was always going to be or 
maybe not, but it but it was, mm -hmm. and it it showed me who I really am. Yeah, because those are the situations that fast forward your development. A moment of connection, which is all you need sometimes. Oh my God, it changes my life every time. And I feel like you set the precedent with that, like stemming even back to your first introduction as Dove Cameron, the artist boyfriend, right? Top twenty on the Hot 100, which is insane <laughs> like fresh out the gate and yeah. that created it became like a queer anthem for people who don't want to be labeled they don't they just want to experience the love that the way they do did you know or feel like that might grow to that magnitude when you released it or wrote it <laughs> no it's so funny because when i wrote it it was so like not empowering mm -hmm. it was so based on a night that was like ended in lots of tears and FaceTiming my best friend and being like, I need you to talk me through what right. just happened. And I was just like recounting it in the studio. Um, and we wrote it so quick because obviously it was very fresh. But it took on like a whole new life because of, you know, just a few days of processing. But it, it became sort of like the story I needed to tell mm -hmm. myself. I could be a better boyfriend than him. I could tell the shit that he never did. It's nice because obviously there, there's queer music on the radio. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like boyfriend broke any sort of um, barrier or record or anything like that. But it was cool for me to see how widely and Embraced it was because I think my own experience with my internalized homophobia being a queer person growing up like whatever parts of myself I rejected yeah to have people not only accept that of me but then also have it feel like it was something that like brought people into my life and further back, you come from the Disney Channel cycle, which is such a unique experience for people. How did being part of Disney kind of build you up to be the artist that you are, or in a good way or a bad way, anyway? I was so young, it almost feels like it didn't happen. Like, yeah, yeah you know, like, like, you know, it's like when people are like, tell me about middle school. And I know that sounds funny because there's all of this video footage of me on the Disney Channel, right? right? Like, so people are like, shut up, like mm -hmm. that can't be real. But it just was such a whirlwind and it was so fast and it, my life changed so drastically. Like to go from being a 14 year old doing whatever yeah. to then like that that whole thing, that whirlwind experience with them that is so singular. Cause it's, it's I think it's like one of the only like old fashioned studio contracts left. Yep. Like it's just really, it's very like MGM classics. Right. And I had no idea what I was doing and I had no idea who I was and um, I just kind of was going with the flow and like trying not to upset anybody and I was trying to process like a lot going on in my own young life and I was bleaching my hair blonde. <laughs> I was dating boys <laughs> and I was, you know, I was just doing whatever, whatever I was doing as a young teenager. It is funny because I, I do think it did inform my work ethic quite a lot because I, I didn't go to college. I mm -hmm. went to Disney. Um, and so because there was so much like cross genre yeah. stuff happening, you know, there was dance, there was, there was recording, there was live performing, there was some elements of touring, there was acting, there was twin acting, there, yeah. was, there was movies, there was all this stuff. And then there was like radio promo and then traveling to different territories and performing at the parks. Like it was just this wild intensive experience. It was, intensive. it was an intensive, it was an intensive, the most like a uh, cataloged internship of all time. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just like I was learning as I went and everybody was watching every inch of it. And I really, I had a good time, you know? Like I think the work of it mm -hmm. was the least stressful part for me of yeah. being like a person during that time. I think everything personally was crashing and burning for me. Right. Like I was like, you know, barely surviving my personal life. But it's also adolescence. That's how it works. Right. <laughs> but then, but then, you know, when I would go to work, that was like my safe space. From the past to the future, what can you tell us about part two? What's coming up next for you? What's going on? I'm spacing it out pretty linearly. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like part one is very much like how the processing of how I got to be the person that I am now. Yeah. And part two is definitely more celebratory. It's definitely much sexier. It's definitely darker. Mm -hmm. But in, you know, I think it's going to sort of like tie the sort of boyfriend breakfast bad idea world together with everything that I'm releasing on part one. And I got a couple cool collabs and a couple, a couple interesting fun things happening that okay. I'm really excited for people to uh, to hear. As soon as someone gives me the green light, I'm like just <laughs> putting the shit out there. I'm, I'm really, really excited. I love it. I'm so happy for you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much.